story is called The Path Through the Cemetery by Leonard Q. Rocks. And it takes place in what was once called Russia. And uh, there may, there's some references to that. This is a, an old story. It'll refer to Ivan the Terrible, who was a czar. He was the first czar of, of Russia. And he was called terrible because he was really cruel. And it's used in a very sarcastic way in this story. And there will be references to the Cossacks who were uh, people from the South Soviet Union and they were very well known for their courage in battle. And then there's a money reference, a ruble, and a ruble is a Russian coin. Ivan was a timid little man, so timid that the villagers called him Pigeon or mocked him with the title, Ivan the Terrible. Every night, Ivan stopped in at the saloon, which was like a bar, which was on the edge of, a, edge of the village cemetery. Ivan never crossed the cemetery to get to his lonely shack on the other side. That path would save many minutes, but he had never taken it, not even in the full light of noon. Late one winter's night, when bitter wind and snow beat against the saloon, the customers took up the familiar mockery. Ivan's mother was scared by a canary when she carried him. Ivan the terrible, Ivan the terribly timid one. Ivan's sickly protest only fed their taunts and they jeered cruelly when the young Cossack lieutenant flung his horrid challenge at his quarry. You are a pigeon, Ivan. You'll walk around the cemetery in this cold, but you dare not cross it. Ivan murmured, the cemetery is nothing to cross, Lieutenant. It is nothing but earth, like all the other earth. The Lieutenant cried, a challenge then. Cross the cemetery tonight, Ivan, and I will give you five rubles, five gold rubles. Perhaps it was the vodka. Perhaps it was the temptation of the five gold rubles. No one ever knew why Ivan, moistening his lips, said suddenly, yes, Lieutenant, I'll cross the cemetery. The saloon echoed their disbelief. The Lieutenant winked at his men and unbuckled his saber. Here, Ivan, when you get to the center of the cemetery, in front of the biggest tomb, stick the saber into the ground. In the morning, we shall go there. And if the saber is in the ground, five gold rubles to you. Ivan took the saber. The men drank a toast to Ivan the Terrible. They roared with laughter. The wind howled around Ivan as he closed the door of the saloon behind him. The cold was knife sharp. He buttoned his long coat and crossed the dirt road. He could hear the lieutenant's voice louder than the rest yelling after him, five rubles, pigeon, if you live. Ivan pushed the cemetery gate open. He walked fast, earth, just earth, like any other earth. But the darkness was a massive dread. Five gold rubles. The wind was cruel and the saber was like ice in his hands. Ivan shivered under his long, thick coat and broke into a limping run. He recognized the large tomb. He must have sobbed. That was the sound that was drowned in the wind. And he kneeled cold and terrified, and he drove the saber through the crust into the hard ground. With all his strength, he pushed it down to the hilt. It was done. The cemetery, the challenge, five gold rubles. Ivan started to rise from his knees. He could not move. Something held him, something gripped him in an unyielding and implacable hold. Ivan tugged and lurched and pulled, gasping in his panic, shaken by a monstrous fear. But something held Ivan. He cried out in terror 
and then made uh, senseless gurgling noises. They found Ivan next morning on the ground in front of the tomb that was in the center of the cemetery. He was frozen to death. The look on his face was not that of a frozen man, but of a man killed by some nameless horror. And the lieutenant's saber was in the ground where Ivan had pounded it through the dragging folds of his long coat. Um, one thing that's good about this story is, and it's very difficult to do in a short story, is to build up suspicion and plot to a climax and all the foreshadowing is there, all the hints. Ivan was scared, he was scared of the cemetery, um, he was a very fearful man, um, and the, the adjectives that the author used uh, to describe wind and saber like ice and knife sharp, the cold, and then the foreshadowing, it mentioned more than once he buttoned his long coat. The long coat was mentioned more than once to kind of give you a clue that it wasn't some unseen dead person's hand grabbing him, but that that's where the saber had gone. So this was a, a very, it's very, very difficult to write a good short story. And this is a short, short story. And to do all of that in that amount of time makes it a classic.